Hi everyone, this video is reviewing algebra. So we're looking at simplifying, expanding, and then factorizing. Five questions here, feel free to skip to the question you're interested in, which is indicated in red. Question one. Now these first few questions are all revision questions from year nine. So I'm going to go through them fairly quickly. Okay, so question one, we're looking at simplifying when you're, um, when you're adding or subtracting uh, pro numerals. Now, so the key to adding and subtracting is you can only add like terms. So this one here, for example, 6a plus 4a. Now let's say, for example, a is an apple. You've got six apples plus four apples. So you're going to have ten apples. Now if this was, let's say this example was B, six apples and four bananas, it would, you couldn't add those two together. You can only add like terms. Second one, 9AB minus 5AB. Now AB and AB, they're like terms. So 9 minus 5 is 4AB. Last one now, you can only add or subtract like terms. So let's look at the A's first. 4 minus, just having an A is like having a 1A, so it's 4 minus 1 is 3A. Now let's have a look at the B's now, the bananas. 5A plus, two, uh, sorry, 5B plus 2B is 7B. Question 2, we're looking at simplifying pro numerals again. Unlike question 1 though, we're now looking at timesing and dividing. So, pretty easy. When you're timesing or dividing, you can, um, you can just time the numbers and the letters. So, the top one will be 4 times 3. I'll do the numbers first. 4 times 3 is 12. And then when you do A times B, it ends up just being AB. So, that's the answer to the first one. Second one now, I'm going to divide the numbers first. 4 divided by 2 is 2. Now, A divided by A, when you have anything divided by itself, you end up with 1. Another way you can look at it, if you have an A on the top and an A on the bottom, you can, what they call, cancel it out. So I'm going to, so A over A equals 1. Anything divided by itself is 1. So I'm going to write a little 1 here, but we're going to get rid of that later on. Now B divided by, there's no B down the bottom here. So you're just going to be left with a B. So the final answer, I don't need to write this 1, so it's just going to be 2B. Question three, now we're expanding brackets. So the key rule when you're expanding brackets is what's out the front of the bracket, you times by every term in the bracket. So the five will times by the x, and then the five will also times by the one. If you happen to have another term here, so let's say I'll just get rid of that, and let's say I added three here, you would also times that by that, and you continue to do that, but that's not there, so I'm gonna rub it back. Rub that back out, and I'll put my bracket back in. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. 5 times x is 5x, and then you've got to add 5 times 1 is 5. And there's the answer to the first one. Let's look at the second one now. We're going to times all of this, all of this 2x by x, and also by 1. So 2x times x is going to be, let's times the numbers. Having x is like having 1x. So 2 times 1 is 2. And then when you times x times x, that's like, that's how you write that, is x squared. x times x will be x squared. Now 2x times 1. Let's do the numbers first. 2 times 1 is 2. Now x, there's no x over here, so it's just 2x. Now a little hint for that one. Whenever you times anything by 1, you'll just get itself. So if you had, uh, let's say, 1,000xy times 1, you're just going to end up with 1,000xy. Just a little side hint for you there. Okay, there's our two answers to question 3. Question 4. Now we're asked to expand and then simplify. So in question three, we expanded the brackets, and that's what we're going to do for 
all of the brackets in these two questions. And then after that, we're going to have to then go and simplify, similar like question one and two. But I'll go and show you how to do these two steps. So the first step I will do is expanding the brackets. So let's look at question one. I'm going to go two by x and two by four. So it's going to be two x plus and two times four is eight. And now we still, then we add three times x, three times five plus 15. How are we looking there? Good. Now, so expanding is done. Now we have to simplify. So, like in question one, uh, we now have, have to add and, or in this case, only add like terms. So we're going to look at the x's first. We've got 2x here plus 3x. So it's going to be 5x. And then we look at the numbers. 8 plus 15 is 23. There's our answer to question one. We've expanded and simplified. Question two now. 2x times x is 2x squared. And then 2x by 4 is 8x plus x times x is x squared. x times 7 is 7x. Good. Now we need to simplify like terms. Now, the first lot of like terms is the x squareds. x squared and x isn't a like term. You can't do x squared plus x equals... You can't add those two together. They're not like terms. So, how many x squareds do we have? We have two here and we have one here. So, it's going to be 3x squared. Plus, now look at the x's now. We have 8x's plus 7x's, 15x. And there's our final answer there. Question five, we're now looking at factorizing. And that is kind of like the opposite to expanding, which we did in question three and also question four. So you've got factorizing, and let's say versus expanding. And what do they both mean? Well, I'll use a simple example. What if you had, say, um, three and then x plus five? Well, currently this is in bracket form. If I want to expand it, I'll go 3x plus 15. So I've now expanded, and that's going to go, I'm going to call that exp for expand. Now, just let's say I didn't have this, and I only had 3x plus 15. If I want to go the other way, and I'm going to call it fac, short for factorizing, I need to put it back in bracket form, and that's what factorizing is all about. So to go from here to here is factorizing. Now I'll show you how to do that with these three questions. Okay, question one, three x plus nine. Now the key is to this is to take out um, something, what's well, like a factor, that is common to both of the two things we're interested in. And it's important to take out the highest common factor. Okay, now what the hell does that mean? I'll go and show you. Let's look at 3x plus 9. Now, is x common in both? Well, it's not, because there's no x over here with the 9. So we're not going to take x out the front of the bracket. Now, is, uh, is 3 common in both? 3 is common in the 3x, and 3 is also a factor of 9. So I can do what we call take it out the front. So here is my highest common factor. And now... There's going to be two things here. I'm going to draw blank lines first. What I like to look at it is this number here is going to be to do with this first number and this number here is going to be to do with this second number. Now when I took 3 out from 3x, what am I left with? 3x, it's dividing by 3. That's what you're doing to take it out. So you're left just with x. Now on the 9 here, 9 divided by 3 is 3. So you're left with 3 at the front of a bracket with x plus 3. Now let's go check. If I went to then expand this back out again, the opposite way, 3x plus 9, bang, we've got the same as what we started with, so we know we're right there. Let's have a go at the second one now. x squared plus 7x. Well, x is common to both, 
x squared isn't common to both. This one here doesn't have x squared. Whereas this one here can be also be written as x times x. And uh, 1 is common to both. So you're going to be taking x out the front. Now, if I divide x squared by x, what am I left with? I'm left with x plus, and if I divide 7x by x, I'm just left with 7. So let's check. x times x is x squared plus x times 7, 7x, and that's what we started with, so we're right. Excellent. Okay, let's have a look at the next one now. And for the last one now, there's going to be x common to both, and also 5 is common to both. You're looking to take out the highest common factor. So everything you can possibly take out the front of the bracket, we want to take out. So 5 is common to both, so we're going to have 5x out the side of two numbers. Now it's not going to be positive here because you've got a negative sign. You always keep this sign the same. So two numbers. This first one is going to relate to 5x squared. Now, if you're confused what I was saying before about dividing and all that, I'll show you another way to do it. In order to find this number here, 5x times this number, whatever this number is I'm trying to find, will give 5x squared. So what can I times 5x by to get 5x squared? Well, if I have x here, 5x times x is 5x squared. Let's have a look at the second one now. Uh, what can 5x times by to get 5x? You've already got the negative sign, so we don't need to look at that. Well, 5x times 1 will get 5x. That was a bit of a trick question there. So our final answer, factorising, will be 5x brackets x minus 1. Let's go check that. 5x times x is 5x squared minus 5x times 1, 5x. And that's the right answer.